G'day, today we're gonna have a look at unboxing the new Rode Wireless Pro. So I'll uh, pop my first one on. Tuck it away under here. All right, that'll do. So let's have a look. Got this delivered last week. Uh, this was my second one. So I've already managed to test uh, the first unit out with interesting results, which we'll get to. All right, we're almost in. So, I think this is the bottom up. Okay, that looks all good. Let's make this nice and pretty. Stunning. Okie dokie. Opening up the box. Um, USB-C to USB-C. Uh, it's five gigabits, 60 watt, so it charges pretty good. Um, now the two different cases, one case is the accessories. Uh, this case is the charging case. So you've got the USB-C adapter on the back, um, power button. Um, so we'll go through the units first. And you've got your quick start guide um, for those who read such things. Um, so in the unit, uh, in the, the box, you've got your three units, uh, the two TXs and the one RX. Um, interestingly, when you first pull them out, uh, they just turn straight on. So they turn off when they're on the charge and then they turn on. So you've got your little um, screen protector. Um, and then once you pull out one of your TXs, they just turn on, get screen protector on it. Um, they're slightly bigger than the original um, well, the, the go-tos, I reckon they're just like a couple of mils, give or take, um, and they just feel a tiny bit heavier. So when you pull them out, um, you can see it instantly connects and goes straight on. The TX goes straight onto the RX. Um, out of the box, um, they've just got the default settings, so they don't have always record turned on. I think they're just on auto gain and things like that, so you need to um, plug that into the computer or your iPhone and switch those over on the, the road app. Um, pop those there like that. Um, so the cool thing is with this new charging case is with all the units inside, you actually just plug this straight into your computer and you can access the files on the, the, the recorded files and adjust the settings um, via um, all three units in the one box. So you don't actually have to have three cables to um, plug in at once. Um, in your accessories box, uh, you've got the magnets. Now these bad boys are pretty strong, um, but I never really have a scenario where um, I would be comfortable having the units in shot you know, externally on, on talent. Um, but if you were just filming yourself or, um, you know, if it wasn't for a client job, then yeah, maybe you're cool with that. But um, they simply, on the back of the clip, slide that in. You can kind of see it goes in between the pins there. Um, and then you've got the magnet. So I'll just pop it on my chest. So you could have it on the outside of a chest or whatever you needed to stick it to, um, just with the magnet. Um, but for 99% of the work I do, uh, I don't think I'll ever use that, but it's good to have. Um, they're very strong magnets, so they keep trying to clip together. 
is fun. Uh, in your box, uh, in your accessories box, you've got your um, iPhone Lightning to USB-C. Um, so that means you can control the RX unit on your iPhone via the Rode app. Um, so that's cool if you want to change the time code settings um, uh, to sync cameras, then change it back to a split mode to go out um, to change the input, sorry, the output of the RX back on the, the main camera you're monitoring. Um, you've got your audio cable, just your 3.5. Um, so that'll be on cameras that take a 3.5 mic in that will be going out of your RX units uh, into your 3.5 mic jack on your camera or your audio device. Um, so you can obviously send a split signal, so left and right, or a merge signal um, to both channels or just one channel, whichever way you set it up. Um, so that's at the top pouch there. Um, you've got a quick start guide, safety guide to your lavalier. Um, got a kind of a microfiber cloth. Um, got your accessories, so you got your pop filter or maybe a light wind filter um, for your lavaliers. Um, and some color markers that you can clip on to help you determine which um, mics on who. Uh, and then you've got your clothing clip. One thing I did notice about this is it would they're very much for static kind of talent. If your, I don't know if your talent has to run or do anything, I just don't feel these would hold the uh, lav. Um, if you need to withstand a bit of movement or bumps. So I'll just show you. So this is the lavalier. It's got a warning about choking. Um, so the clip just goes on there, um, which it's kind of snug, but I don't know if your talent pulled the cable or something, I definitely feel it would fall off. Um, and then I've definitely got a note about this back panel. Um, so you got the front of the mic and this back panel. So I'll show you something shortly with that. So just be mindful. I kind of feel that's a bit flimsy in terms of not, uh, not overly snug, but uh, for interviews and static things, I think it's more than enough. Um, your pop filters obviously are in the shape of um, the mic. Um, so you get two lavaliers in the kit. Um, you've got your little moisture absorber. Uh, and then you've got five uh, little furries. So two of them, uh, oh sorry, three of them. What do you get? One, two, three. Three of them are for the top, if you're using the internal mic on the, the TX unit itself. Um, so you just, um, you just match up the two white dots with the two marks there, press down and then turn. And then you've got your fluffy um, wind kind of dead cat vibe on top. So that's if you, you were gonna just clip that onto someone and um, run with it like that, or obviously have your magnetized pack so you had the, it facing up towards the voice. Um, so that's kind of cool if you need that as a, uh, to use the internal mic itself. When you've got the, the wind fluffy thing stuck on, um, you can put your clip on and then go into your shirt. I'll just put it below my current mic. Um, and you could clip on, run the cable down, but obviously you've got pretty giant fluffy, so you'd probably want to just um, go under the shirt or under the clothing anyway, but that's cool that they include that. So definitely versatile and useful. Um, obviously the change um, 
for this update was the locking um, 3.5. So once you're in, you can lock it down. Um, so that way, Talent's not going to pull it out on you and uh, lose that mic. So that's kind of cool. Um, the units have um, the mute button, which you can assign um, in the app. I don't actually know what you can assign it to other than mute, but um, you got mute on one side. I'm sorry, on one unit. And you'll actually see when you press it, it comes up with mute. So muted. So that's kind of cool. You can see that as you go. Um, so you obviously got your battery indicator, uh, your levels, um, and obviously the, the TX units are recording 32 bit float as they go. And they've got um, showing you if they record and with their the little blue lights, the connection to the RX unit itself. Um, so that's pretty much everything in the accessories. Um, it's cool that they give you a little pouch for that. So that's everything that comes in the box. Um, the great thing I find is the charging case that when you take your units out, I'll just take the fluffy off that one. When you take the units out and in, uh, they turn off um, and start charging. So obviously just um, you'd want to make sure you keep this um, charging case charged, but um, you can see they turn off once they're inside. Um, so yeah, this is my second kit. Um, I have been in contact with Road, uh, I think about three times uh, since getting the first kit last week. Um, so I've had a couple of issues since using it. Um, First one I'll show you is on the lav. So um, I use these, um, I think it's Roycott um, sticky to go on the talent skin and then you stick the mic to it and then you put a fluffy over that so it's concealed and undercover. What happened when I used the, the new lav mic for testing is the sticky actually pulled the back of the lapel off. So obviously there's not enough glue on that particular rear side. So I'll show you the new one. So there's that, that backing there. So that's a little bit of a, a flaw. I feel if, if you were going to try and use these in a, uh, or trying to conceal them in a professional manner, um, using, uh, these kind of industry standard stickies, um, but I'd definitely um, be cautious if you're going to stick these um, lav mics to anything sticky to go to talent, um, just because of that separate separate back. Um, so that must have been a design feature to actually uh, put the unit in from that side. Um, rather than it being one piece. So, um, so just to show you an example on a, on a professional, or on, a, on another professional mic, uh, the COS 11, the Seiken, um, you can have those stickies, but obviously those units are, there's no really removable bits. So they're not gonna, there's nothing to pull off. So, um, but these are things we use all the time um, to conceal mics. So it would have been handy if um, the road version of the lav didn't have that second, or yeah, just didn't have that removable piece. So we'll see what they say about that. Um, so just definitely something to look out for. So just watch out when you stick things um, to it. Now the next um, kind of issue I had was I had both units out uh, on talent. Um, so I had both units out on talent um, and at a couple of stages, I, I needed them to be further away from the camera. Um, so I wasn't worried about the connection and being able to monitor because obviously 
the uh, units would be recording uh, internally and then I'll just sync it up um, in post. So um, unfortunately what happened is, so this was, um, I had them on and out for about two hours and 10 minutes or so. Um, the files record in hour blocks. Um, so on one of the devices, I've got two one hour files and then a, a third, you know, call it 12 minute file. Um, so I must have been recording for about two hours and 12 minutes. On the, um, the unit that's failed, it's locked up. So when I've got it back off talent, um, all the lights were locked on and um, the, I, I didn't really notice this on the monitor, on the, on the RX unit, um, but it's subsequently happened again. So I've seen it now where the meter for that unit just shows that it's full uh, in terms of volume, it just holds at its full extent on the, the bar. Um, and then you can't really do anything with the button. So what I worked out, you kind of have to hold um, the power button for about, oh, it's like 10, 15, 20 seconds or something. And then the unit turns off and then turns back on again. Um, before I had done the kind of hard reset, I did try and put it back in the charging case, connect it to the computer and try and get the files and have a look. But that's when I noticed that on that unit, I only had one file that was one hour long exactly. And then there was no other two files. So um, there must be some sort of quirk. Um, that was with the, the original firmware that came with it. Obviously today they've just released, uh, I think it's 1.2.3 or something similar to that. So there's a brand new firmware, which I have updated. Interestingly, when I did update um, the, so I had marked, uh, the unit that failed me on the night. Um, when I did the firmware update, um, the other unit, which is the one I'm wearing, um, actually locked up out of the firmware update. So on the RX unit, um, it had um, showing that the, the one that had locked up had minimal battery and um, wasn't and the, the signal was just full as if it was kind of receiving a signal and you know, too loud or whatever. Um, so I had to hard reset that um, and then it's come good and the battery was fine. And it was fully charged and things. So a couple of quirks. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on in these little units because, you know, they've got the float and they've got 42 hours worth or 44 hours worth of recording capability and there's a battery um, and obviously they just released new firmware. So um, not hating on road or anything like that. Hopefully they get more feedback from everyone and some of the user experiences um, and any of these quirks can kind of get ironed out. It was a little disappointing for me because obviously I lost an hour's worth of um, uh, onboard recording, which would have been useful, but um, we can work with that. And um, yeah, so I have sent that feedback to road. Um, and then also just wanting to check, um, yeah, if there's any, if, if the units need to come back, if they're faulty or something. Um, so we'll, I'll keep you up, updated on that. Now, the other thing um, that the new firmware has um, fixed is there was an issue um, with time code. So you could give, you can set um, the RX unit to transmit time code um, and there's time code number five, which you can then go in and go to devices that have external time code um, receivers. So like the R5C, it's got its own little time code dedicated area. Um, but prior to today's firmware update, you did have to turn the gain up in the RX unit for the R5C to um, receive that um, time code input. Um, what they've done now, and, and and sorry, on that first firmware, the R uh, the C seventy wouldn't actually receive time code from the unit. So I have tried and tested now with that new firmware update that the Canon C seventy via its external time code input will receive um, time code from the um, RX unit on the Wireless Pro. Um, so that's really handy. So you can kind of sync 
um, your A and your B camera, and then your two TXs will also receive that sync. Then you can put the timecode, um, put the RX out of timecode mode back into the split mode, put that into camera and monitor and record. So it's very handy rather than having to have an external timecode device. Um, obviously the software is pretty good at syncing audio and but this is just a handy little backup um, just to make sure everyone's in sync. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool and how quickly they got that update. I, I was in contact with Rode um, maybe Thursday, Friday last week because it was one of the first things I tested. Um, and then they got back to me today saying that that firmware update today has fixed that issue. So well done to Rode for being so responsive and quick. Um, this has been all my own thoughts and um, I've purchased both these Rode units myself um, and obviously have, have used um, one set of units on a job um, with mixed results. So um, I'll keep giving it a crack and uh, just make sure, you know, it might've just been a firmware uh, anomaly, but um, Hope this helps someone out there and um, I'll also uh, do another video shortly just showing uh, how to do the time code um, setup and syncing uh, an R5C and a, a C70. So um, enjoy, catch you soon.